Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're here for the first time, I'm Jane. My husband Mike is behind the camera. British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty, frugal and money saving life on a super tight budget here in Brittany in northwest France. And every Wednesday we open our home and invite you into the sofa for a midweek money chat. Let's take a look at what we're going to have a chat about this week. are in the middle of a cost of living crisis. We've got sky high inflation, we are in a recession, who knows if we're heading for a depression. Times are extraordinarily hard. There are skills that we all need to get through them. And yes, it would be lovely, wouldn't it, for all of us to run away to the wilderness and have all of those skills to survive with our bare hands. But in reality, what we need are basic everyday domestic skills on the home front to get through these very, very difficult times. Let's get started. As you saw, the first topic is food. Now I could go through hundreds and hundreds of these, but I'm gonna nail it down to just a few. And if you think of any that I haven't mentioned, you go and leave a comment below, because I love to read your comment, and I know that viewers love to read the comments too, and this is a sharing community. Number one is the ability to make a meal from scratch with what you have. And I'm looking at my notes here, so please excuse me. It's the ability to open up that cupboard, even when the fridge is bare, and see a bottle of oil, dried onions, a tin of tomatoes, dried garlic, or just that bulb of garlic sat there. And think to yourself, I can see tomato sauce, and I can add that to pasta, and I can make a meal. It's the ability to go to the cupboard and see dried potatoes or tin potatoes and a tin of fish and maybe some dried parsley and go, aha, that and a bit of oil, I've got some fish cakes there. So we don't need to be a chef. We just need a few basic skills and to build a repertoire of basic meals that we can make from scratch. Carrying on from those basic meals that we can make from scratch, a real skill is being able to make stock. Now whether that is fish stock from fish bones and fish heads, and whether you're, if you're at the supermarket and they get whole fish in and they fillet them, they will have those bits of leftover fish. If you have a fish market or fish stalls or a fish shop, they will have those. So if you go in there and buy a few pieces of fish, ask them. Do you have any fish carcasses that I could have for free, please, so I can make my fish stock? It's exactly the same at the butchers. Some of them will let you have bones. It's exactly the same at the supermarkets. If they have whole animal policies of butchering within the supermarket, and some do, of having bones. At the very least, if you have a chicken carcass or chicken bones and the ability to make chicken stock, I can think to myself, I always have jars of frozen chicken stock in my freezer. I can take that chicken stock, I can defrost it, I can add in some potatoes, some lentils, some carrots, and a few vegetables. I have then some kind of a stew or some kind of a stock, some kind of a soup, I beg your pardon. So it's a very basic skill, but it will get you through. Learn how to make stock. The next very important skill, and any of us who've brought up children know that this skill, when money is tight, is so important. And it is basic baking from scratch. So there's a few things that you can learn to make which are very, very simple. Number one is pastry. And then if you've made pastry, can you make pies? Can you make a quiche? Another one, can you bake a basic loaf of bread, having flour in the cupboard, 
having dried yeast in the cupboard, you will always be able to make a loaf of bread. And if you can't make bread, can you make flatbreads? Can you make pancakes? Those very basic things. You make yourself a batch of pancakes or a batch of waffles. Basic baking. Can you make a basic cake, some cookies, some flapjacks? Those basic skills, especially if you've got children or hungry teenagers or working people, or you just like a bit of cake yourself. They really are just a basic food skill and they really are really helpful. Another really, really important domestic skill on the home front in these really difficult times is portion control. Do you know what? I think most of us only ever worry about portion control when we're trying to lose weight, but it is something that we need to be thinking of all of the time because it stops waste. Here's an example. When you eat a jacket potato, a baked potato, you're only eating a potato of a certain size. So that is as much potato as you need for any meal, whether you're making homemade chips, fries, or you're making mashed potato, or you're making boiled potato, you need that. If you eat a carrot as a snack, you never eat more than one. You need one carrot, so one regular sized potato, one carrot per person, per meal. You only need one decent sized floret of cauliflower. You only need one spoonful of peas or one spoonful of beans. It's all you need. And if you only cook that amount, you're not going to waste any. You only need, and brace yourself for this one, four ounces of meat in a meal. So you know one of those little tiny patties in McDonald's, that's two ounces. A quarter pounder is two of those. So two of those little beef patties is the absolute maximum of meat you need in a meal. You don't need half a cow. You don't need to be eating all of this. Portion control is so important. In these incredibly difficult times, we need to have to cook no more than we need. We don't need to be eating masses of meat and fish, and we just need enough. And if we only cook enough, we won't waste any. <laughs> Another really important skill to keep our food costs down in these incredibly difficult times is knowing how to bulk out your meals. So whether you're adding lots of extra brown rice or lots of extra quinoa, or you're adding plenty of lentils, we like to have those big brown or big green lentils and add those to stews, to soups, to cottage pie, to shepherd's pie, to chili, to bolognese sauce, and bulk it out. You don't need half the meat then. If you're adding a whole ton of green leafy vegetables, of cauliflower, of green beans, of carrots, to a plate of food, or when you're adding to coleslaw, if you're adding, sorry, if you're adding salad, think coleslaw, which is white cabbage, grated carrot and sliced onion and a couple of spoonfuls of jar jarred mayonnaise, those are quite cheap products. That's what I mean about bulking out your food. You might be adding some wholemeal pasta to that or some wholemeal bread to that, but having that skill to bulk out your meals so you don't need so much meat, you don't need so much of the expensive stuff and that you can bulk this out with really healthy stuff it will stretch your food budget in these very difficult times. With the cost of living crisis, I don't think any of us anywhere are going to be setting a thermostat on our house and go, oh, that's warm and toasty. Let's walk around barefoot with a, with a t-shirt on in January. It's not gonna happen. It really isn't gonna happen. So, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is we need that skill of keeping ourselves warm. 
The first thing we need to do when keeping ourselves warm is we need to keep active. We all know in the morning if we're like, if you're like me and you're retired, you're probably doing all your housework and domestic stuff in the morning, or whilst you're busy and running around, you're probably nice and warm, aren't you? But you're gonna get cold when you're sat still. So don't sit still for too long. Think to yourself, I'm gonna sit still for half an hour, then I'm gonna get up and move around. I've got notes here. Wrap up warm. How many of us don't wear enough clothes in our own homes because we're not used to it? Wrap up warm, thick socks, slippers, get some leggings under your jeans, chaps, get some long thermal underwear under your trousers, get yourself some base layers, get yourself a t-shirt. So my summer t-shirt will become my base layers in the winter. Over the top of this will go a long sleeve t-shirt. My nice cool summer scarves will turn into warm winter scarves. I'll put probably over the top of that a jumper with a good collar on it, and then a jacket or a sleeveless jacket over the top of that as well. When I was working in my office from home, I wore fingerless gloves. I sat with a duvet, a great big thick comforter over my lap, and I had a hot water bottle in my back. If I'm watching TV and it's cold, I'll put a hot water bottle against my back. I'll keep a flask of hot drinks at hand so I'm keeping myself warm. And if I'm sat there and I am getting cold, I'll get up, start marching on the spot, waving my arms around and, and wiggling around. Stick some music around and having a dance about and keep yourself warm. A huge expanse and energy drainer is laundry. So I'm gonna talk through about how we can keep that cost down as much as possible. The first thing is the obvious, don't wash clean clothes. Here's a real hint to you if you've got kids or teenagers who just chuck their clothes down and want them washed. Fold them up, put them away, they won't know you've not washed them. They'll just find them in the drawer. But for yourself and the adults in the house, obviously you need to wash underwear after one wear, but everything else can be worn a few times. Here's a trick, if you're worried that people in your office or workplace are thinking, oh, she wore that yesterday, just take it off, put it back in the cupboard and wear something else, but then wear it again another time. If you've got your laundry and you are going to wash it, take a look, you can wash it on cold. Our washing machines here aren't all designed to wash on cold water, but they are designed to wash at 20 degrees. And you can wash them at 20 degrees and it's a lot less. Pick a shorter wash cycle. Use the shortest wash cycle. Another thing with laundry to keep the costs down. If you've just spilt a bit of food on your clothing, just spot clean that bit. Now I know some of you really don't like to tumble dry your clothes because you say if you dry them outside, it makes them all hard and crispy. Put them outside to dry and then, here's a hint for you people who love your dryers, Put them back in the dryer just for five minutes and that will soften them up for you if you really don't like lime dry clothes. And there's the obvious one as well, only wash when you've got a full washing machine. point is about basic general energy saving. If you have a house bigger than you need and you have some rooms that you don't use, you do not need to heat them. If you are worried about mould because you're not using that room and when you're not using it, pull everything away from the walls, pull everything into the middle of the room and you'll have air circulating. On dry cool days, open all the doors, open all the windows and you'll change the air in that room and stop the mold from occurring. So please don't worry about mold, just heat the rooms that you are going to use, not the ones you're not using. And then there's all the obvious ones as well. Do not leave anything switched on that doesn't need switching on. Pull the TV socket out at the night, your computer, everything that you don't need, your washing machine, your dryer, anything that you don't use, things that you need to leave on in your fridge and your freezer. Everything else can be completely switched off. So there we go. There's just general things that we can do. We don't need to leave any lights on. We don't need to heat empty rooms. We can save money there.
Another thing that I've often noticed, and especially in the UK if I'm out walking at night time, is people don't shut their curtains. And I think it's such an easy way to save money and save energy and save costs, is as soon as you get home in the evening, shut your curtains. If you're here in Europe at night time, shut your shutters. The French say they always know if English people live in that house because they don't shut their shutters at night. Shut your shutters. Now you might be thinking, I don't live in Europe, I don't have shutters, what can I do? You can make shutters. If you've got any cardboard lying around, you can cut your cardboard out, stick it all together so it fits into your window, and at night time, you can pop that up in your window and it creates like an indoor shutter. That and shutting your curtains will create extra insulation. Something that we used to do, and it's a very easy thing to do, you can either hang up two sets of curtains at the same time, or the simplest way to do it every single night, if you've got a spare duvet, or that you've got spare sheets or spare blankets, is literally hang them over the top of the curtain rail, tuck them in, and that will create another set of curtains. have to stay clean and keeping clean costs us money but there are ways that we can do that that will save money now you are going to have one of two hot water systems you are either going to have an on-demand hot water system which is either electrical gas that you turn your hot tap on and it will heat the water on demand or you're going to have a hot water tank that heats up some of you in the day because if you've got solar, or it's going to heat up overnight or at some time by electricity to heat a whole tank of water. If one of the other, so let's look at on-demand hot water. The quickest and easiest way to save money on that is with yourself when you are having a shower, is reduce the amount of time that you are in there. Get in, get out, get washed as quickly as possible. If you are like us, and you have a system that heats a hot water tank, then you can do what we do and you can take navy showers. You get in, you get wet, you turn the tap off. You've got your wet flannel, you've put your shower gel on it, you've washed yourself all over, you put your shampoo on your head, you've rust massaged it in, then you turn the tap on again and you rinse off. And that saves you money because you're not using too much hot water and not using too much energy. Now let's look at saving money on domestic goods and the best way that we can save money on domestic goods is quite simply to look after the things that we have got. Let's look at a fridge freezer for example. A fridge freezer has got a heat exchange on the back of it and that is the way that refrigeration works. So if you pull it away from the wall just an inch more than it's there and it's sticking out in the room two centimeters it won't kill us and um, pull it away it will make it more effective keeping the back of your fridge clean as well will also make that more effective the next thing that we need to look after is everything that we own so if you've got a decent dining table, make sure it has a dining table protector and a tablecloth on it and you're protecting it. If you have got sofas and you want those to last, make sure that you're keeping them covered. It's also nice and warm and cosy in the winter. Make sure nobody is coming into your house wearing outdoor shoes. It'll not only save your rugs and your carpet and your hard floors from being damaged or made dirty, it will save your vacuum cleaner from picking up any grit. So make sure you're looking after what you have. In times like now, we really do not need anything that can break down to break down. It's just so expensive. So it is really, really important to keep up with regular maintenance. It's more important than ever that we make sure the car goes in to be serviced annually. 
It's false economy not to do it. It's so important that if you have a gas boiler, that you have that serviced every year or whatever heating system you have or whatever air system that you have, that you have it serviced every single year. It's so important with the small items that you have, for example, looking after your washing machine, making sure that you clean the filters and your vacuum cleaner as well, that you make sure that you clean out the filters and that you do all your regular maintenance to make sure whatever you've got lasts. I've saved domestic finances for last. They are so important. And if you're a regular to this channel, you know I spend a lot of time on this very sofa chatting away to you about budgets and spending plans. And it, they are so, so important. And it may be the first time in people's lives that they've actually come to that moment when we need to do this. And again, I'm referring to my list, so do excuse me. The first one we all need to have is a written budget and um, we're going to make sure that there's links below to several of our budgeting videos that you can see exactly how we put together our written budget every single month a budget is not a budget unless it's written down a budget is a forward plan of where your money is going to go it's not where you sit there at the end of the month and say where did my money go the next one is setting up regular savings. So when you've got that written budget, the first line on that budget is always savings. Because at times like this, it is going to be your savings that are going to get you through this. So save first. The next part of this is planned spending. Nobody ever in these difficult times, or ever at all, in any family, should ever be spending any money at all that isn't on the budget. Nothing. Nobody should just be spending money spontaneously or nilly-willy all over the place without it being on the budget. So all spending is planned. And with all of that spending as well, you need to track spending. So you need to bring your receipts home, you need to write it down somewhere, whether it's in a budget book, your spreadsheet, on your budgeting app, wherever you do it, you've got to track that spending. You can't put it against your budget unless you're doing that. And finally, our budget meetings. Whether you do it like Mike and I do as a couple, if you've got children, you've got they've got to be involved in this somewhere. Or if they're not involved in it, they've got to see that you do it. What are mum and dad doing? They're sat at the dining table or the kitchen table or they're sat in the home office and they're going through the monthly budget. So there needs to be monthly, weekly or however it suits you, budget meetings. There are so many skills that we need, aren't there, to survive this cost of living crisis that we couldn't possibly mention them all. And this is where I hand it over to you. So thank you to everybody who writes a comment because we read and respond to every single one of them. We really do appreciate that. If you've enjoyed the video today, you found it interesting, go on, hit the like button. We want to thank everybody who hits the like button and especially to everyone who lets the adverts roll because that's how we YouTubers make our living. Just leaves me to say on behalf of Mike and myself, Thanks for watching. Bye.